This video is a continuation of our series on the nervous system. Thus far we have talked about neurons and how they work, how they're structured. Now we're going to turn our eyes to neuroglia, which are our non-conductive supportive cells. And so all of the small dots that you see in this slide, those are our neuroglia. And while they look very small, they have some very important functions in our central and peripheral nervous systems. We have six different types of neuroglia. Four of those types are found in the central nervous system, while two of those types are found in the peripheral nervous system. So not only are we going to learn the names and the functions of these neuroglia, or glial cells, but we are going to learn their locations as well. We are going to begin with oligodendrocytes. Oligodendrocytes are located in the central nervous system and they are going to function in creating a myelin sheath around nerve fibers to insulate these nerve fibers from the environment. This insulation increases conduction speed of signals through the axons in the central nervous system. You'll notice that we have one oligodendrocyte myelinating several different axons. In order to achieve this myelination, the oligodendrocyte will send out a process that wraps around the nerve fiber to create many layers of lipids surrounding our axon. So when we look at our axon in this picture, it is surrounded by many layers of oligodendrocyte process. This insulation with that lipid is going to allow action potentials to move very quickly from one node or area of no myelination through the axon to the next node. Next we have ependymal cells which are also located in our central nervous system. Our ependymal cells are going to line the internal cavities of the brain and spinal cord. In these locations they are going to function in producing, circulating, and maintaining the balance of materials in our cerebrospinal fluid. So in our pictures, we can see ependymal cells are going to be lining capillaries inside of our brain. These ependymal cells are then going to exchange material with the blood vessels to create and maintain the materials inside of our cerebrospinal fluid. You can also see that we've got cilia located on many of our ependymal cells. These cilia are going to move material across the membrane in one direction to cause the circulation of cerebrospinal fluid. Our third type of neuroglia in our central nervous system are called microglia. Our microglia are going to act as both janitors and police for our central nervous system. And they are going to be macrophages that wander through the central nervous system and phagocytize any foreign particles that are found. So here in our picture on the left, we have a resting microglia that is stimulated by chemical signals from our neurons and our neuroglia. And these chemical signals are going to activate our microglia to promote the phagocytosis of foreign particles or cellular debris. The last type of glial cell in our central nervous system are called astrocytes. These cells have the broadest range of function inside of our central nervous system and they have many many different jobs. One of the most notable jobs 
is that our astrocytes are going to form a supportive 3D framework for our nervous tissue. We can see our astrocyte on the left is connected to blood vessels and it's connected to neurons and it has these processes called pedicils that attach both to our blood vessels and to our neurons to hold everything in place. Not only are they going to hold our blood in place, but they form a blood-brain barrier by surrounding those capillaries with their perivascular feet. So here we can see our foot processes completely surrounding our capillaries to shield our cerebrospinal fluid from any material that might be in the blood that could accidentally stimulate a neuron and cause problems in our brain. As our astrocytes are connected to our capillaries, they are going to monitor neuron activity and regulate blood flow through the brain by constricting or dilating those capillaries. During development, our astrocytes are going to guide neuronal growth and secrete a nerve growth factor. So they do help our neurons to grow when we are young, but when we get older and we damage our neurons, our astrocytes are going to prevent the regrowth of neurons by forming hardened scar tissue starting to run out of room here. So we've got a couple more functions for our astrocytes. Astrocytes will also communicate with neurons and influence synaptic signaling between neurons. And lastly, our astrocytes are going to regulate the composition of CSF by absorbing excess neurotransmitters. So as you can see, our astrocytes have very broad function in our central nervous system. So the four neuroglia in our central nervous system include astrocytes, microglia, ependymal cells, and oligodendrocytes. Now we're going to move on to our peripheral nervous system. In our peripheral nervous system, we have two types of neuroglia. We have satellite cells, which are often called amphicytes, and we have Schwann cells. Our satellite cells are going to be located in ganglia, where they are going to provide insulation around the somas of peripheral neurons and regulate the environment of those somas. So here we can see our soma is surrounded by our satellite cells and those satellite cells are regulating the chemical environment and then we can see down here our second type of glial cell in the peripheral nervous system is a Schwann cell. Schwann cells are going to form myelination in peripheral nervous system nerve fibers. So just as we saw with our oligodendrocytes, our Schwann cells are going to wrap around our nerve fiber and have many different layers of lipid going around that nerve fiber to provide the insulation. The difference between Schwann cells and oligodendrocytes besides location is that when providing myelination, one oligodendrocyte can myelinate several axons, whereas in the peripheral nervous system, one Schwann cell myelinates one portion of one axon. Now you may notice that I only drew on this picture on our previous page and showed you the myelination going around in circles around those axons. So what's going on over here? Well, this isn't myelination because we're not creating those circles around our axons. 
instead our Schwann cells are creating tubes for many axons to run along and these are unmyelinated axons. So again we're not providing myelination, we're just providing a track for that axon to travel through. So this slide is a great summary of our glial cells because it divides us into our central nervous system and our peripheral nervous system by location and then it is going to give short summaries of the functions of all of our neuroglia. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.